One of the best tips that I can give you for simplifying complex fractions is just to multiply the denominators. But I don't want you to multiply the denominators right here. What I want you to do is simplify first. So what I want you to do when you're first looking at a complex fraction is just kind of like count all the um, denominators that you have, right? Right, you have one, two, three. Okay, so now what we need to do is say, all right, which of these denominators can I simplify? X plus four, can't really do anything. Over here though, I know I can factor out a two. So therefore, what I'm gonna do is simply below it, I'm just going to factor out the two and that's gonna be an X plus a four. Okay, then I'm just gonna put a line through there. Right, and then over here, I have an X, I can't do anything from there, all right? Now, so this tip, the best thing to do is instead of trying to remember or try to think about, you know, what are the common denominators, is just to multiply them. But here's the caveat though. You have to first simplify, and then two, you don't need to like re-multiply things, like you don't need to repeat multiples. Right here, I have an x plus four and x plus four. I don't need to continue, like I don't need to put x plus four squared. You only need it to be once, right? Because remember, our goal, our idea is, whatever our denominators are, have to evenly divide into our numerators. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply everything by the least common denominator. That's gonna be our numerator. That's how it's gonna work. So we have two times x plus four. And then what else could I multiply by? An x. Right? So I could rewrite my least common multiple as a 2x times an x plus 4. All right? Again, I don't need to apply this twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put brackets here. Now, this is a pretty big problem. And I'm not going to want to rewrite every single term times this 2x plus 4. But I just want you to understand, you're going to multiply this, the 2x times x plus 4, your LCM, times everything over here. So I'm going to do a little bit of mental math gymnastics here. And as we're applying it, I'll kind of talk my way through so you can follow along. So when I multiply a 2x, remember this is technically over one, right? So I multiply 2x times x plus four times the five over the x plus four, the x plus fours are going to divide out. And that's gonna leave me with a 2x times a five. All right, then let's go to the next one. Here, I'm gonna multiply 2x times x plus four times a one over two times x plus four. So the twos are gonna divide out, right? Because this is the numerator, this is the denominator. So the twos will divide out and my x plus fours will divide out. That's just gonna leave me with an x times a one. So therefore, I'll just write it like this, an x times one. And then over here, we're gonna have a two x times x plus four times a two over x. Well here, the x's are gonna divide out and that's just gonna leave me with a two times x plus four times two. So that'll be a two times an x plus four and then times two. Okay, so now you can notice here what happens, guys, is remember all these denominators that I had, right? This one, this one, this one. If you multiply your least common multiple correct, then you will have gotten rid of each and every one of your denominators, right? And notice, I got rid of them. That got rid of, got rid of, got rid of. And the reason why you didn't really like get rid of them, all what happened was your least common, your denominators divided evenly into this least common denominator that you multiplied. And as long as you multiply everything, by the least common multiple, you're not changing the value of your complex fraction. Now we need to go and do simplify things. So I have a two x times five, which is going to be a 10 x. That's gonna be all over a x. I can distribute here. So that's going to be, actually, you know what? Let's multiply the two times two is a four. So therefore that's gonna be plus a four x and that'd be plus 16. Cool, and now I can rewrite this as a 10 x all over. Let's see, what is that going to be? A five x plus a 16. And now let's go and look at our values that are going to be restricted. So when you're dealing with the complex fraction, what I always like to say is like, all right, what are the values that X cannot equal? All right, well, those are gonna be the values that are gonna make your denominator equal to zero. So you could say X cannot equal zero, right? X cannot equal a negative four. This would be the same thing. And then also here, if you were to set a five X plus 16 equal to zero, what would that be? Well, again, let's just kind of do the work over here. You know, if I had a five X plus 16 equals zero, So applying just your operations here, you get x is equal to a negative 16 over five. So hopefully this video will give you some good value as far as some tips on how to approach simplifying complex fractions. In the next video, I'm gonna show you the most common mistake that students are gonna make when simplifying complex fractions. I'll see you in the next video.